Watch Dogs, after an inordinate amount of hype and multiple controversies, what are we getting ourselves into? Is it a hack job or a successful endeavor? Disclaimer, if you don't intend to use modifications on Watch Dogs, this review will end right here with a simple message. Don't play this game. The vanilla version only looks okay and the mouse acceleration makes it unplayable with the keyboard and mouse. If, however, you can spare a few minutes to fix it, then yes, it might be worth it. In Watch Dogs, you play as Aiden Pierce, a skilled hacker haunted by the guilt of his niece's death after one of his less successful jobs leads to her demise. Your search for those responsible leads to quite a few interesting encounters. However, while the game even touches on heavy themes such as human trafficking and the disappearance of privacy, it fails to make effective use of these and evolves into a simple revenge story. It's also especially difficult to relate to Aiden when he calls out other crooks for, say, stealing, yet does the same thing in-game. Still, Watch Dogs story does have focus, unlike the hot mess that was Far Cry 3. Watch Dogs is an open-world mix of stuff, platforming, and combat. Sound familiar? If you've played any other Ubisoft game in the last few years, you know what to expect, the primary difference here being that you'll use firearms and take cover in combat. There is also an upgrade system, but really, the most useful upgrade is focus, the game's take on slow motion. Silent takedowns are also useful, but if all else fails, simply hack the cameras or explosives around the area and cause mayhem. For a game supposedly about hacking, there is little in the way of digital mayhem and a lot in the way of shooting and stealth, depending on your preferences. However, be warned, even with the countless weapons you can collect, buy, or earn through completing side missions, stealth is always preferable since Aiden has the resilience of a wet tissue. Fast travel in the form of trains and later hideouts make reaching the opposite side of the map painless, but there's still a lot of driving to do. The cars are reasonably responsive and well differentiated, but the licensed soundtrack is mostly forgettable and the same can be said about the city since the game doesn't even showcase its own landmarks. And while cars handle fine, driving motorcycles with precision at high speed is akin to peeing through an erection. It's not impossible, but accidents may happen. Also, you can't fire a gun while driving at all, but thankfully you aren't defenseless, as you can take down vehicles by bursting sewer pipes and causing traffic disorders. Helicopters, however, are a pain to deal with, as they are always out of your reach. For some reason, you can't look straight up to take them out, which leaves both you and the integrity of your controller at their mercy. Pro tip. Either unlock the Disable Helicopter upgrade, or get a grenade launcher as soon as you can. While primary missions mostly consist of taking out enemies with a bit of driving or hacking puzzles from time to time, secondary missions are just as, if not more, varied. Ranging from fixer contracts where you must deliver a car as quickly as possible, to taking out gang hideouts, and even intervening to save innocent civilians from being victims. But if you've played any other Ubisoft game, they'll feel uncomfortably familiar. And even if you haven't, they'll get old way before you complete them all. The rewards the side quests offer eventually become superfluous, since the best cars and weapons can be acquired either by buying them or stealing them, and then your motivation for completing them completely disappears. That's not to say that there aren't any interesting missions or memorable encounters, but there are exceptions. It doesn't take long for the secondary missions to start feeling like filler, which is ironic considering Ubisoft themselves perfected the art of enjoyable side quests with Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. The reputation system from that series also makes a return, as the more Chicago citizens like you, the less likely they are to call the police when shooting starts. You will want to have a good standing with the people, as the police don't screw around and since all it takes is a few rescues for people to restrain themselves from making that call, you'll actually want to act like a sane person and not go on random rampages. That said, it's kind of baffling that the citizens of Chicago seem to have no problem with you simply taking their cars and leaving them miles away from their initial spot, in the best case scenario that is. 
Multiplayer 2 is problematic. While there is nothing as entertaining as invading someone else's game and laughing maniacally as they scramble desperately to find you, the competitive modes are plagued by cheaters because apparently Ubisoft forgot to implement any kind of anti-cheating measures. It's incredibly ironic that a game about hackers gets hacked itself. Watch Dogs is one of the best looking games ever on PC. With the pure E-Free mod installed, it's impossible not to appreciate how the game looks. Things look a bit washed out in daylight, but at night, or whenever it's raining, your mouth will start watering. But it comes at a cost. To truly enjoy the game, you will definitely need a good processor and a high-end graphics card. Watch Dogs fails to take advantage of its ideas and themes, and the filler side missions don't help it either. When you spend 16 minutes out of 20 hours hacking in a game supposedly about the very subject, you know something's gone horribly wrong. The game's ending does hint at a sequel, so hopefully the next game will have more than graphics to offer. And maybe they'll be offered out of the box next time.